a spoof song doing the rounds on the internet, poking fun at efforts to crack down on illegal downloading. But for the music industry, it's a serious business. It's estimated they stand to lose a billion pounds over the next five years as a result of online piracy. Earlier this year, the industry reached an agreement with Britain's biggest internet service providers to try to tackle music piracy. Warning letters would be sent to people involved in music piracy, with persistent offenders facing further sanctions. There are signs this morning that it could be having an impact. The 2008 Digital Music Survey suggests that internet piracy has fallen by 10% in the last year, and it claims that dodgy downloaders are increasingly worried that their internet providers could cut them off. Well, I'm joined on the line now by Russell Hart from Entertainment Media Research, who carried out the research. Um, Russell, do you think then that people are getting increasingly paranoid that they're being watched? Good morning. Um, well, there's some very interesting findings here, which is that 60 um, odd percent of um, illegal downloaders do believe that they're currently being monitored by their ISPs, which in fact isn't the case. Um, they're quite mistaken in that. So I led to believe. But um, as a result, uh, almost three quarters of them um, say that um, they would cease downloading Ill illegally um, if they were contacted formally by their ISP. So has nothing come from this big meetings that, that happened earlier on this year from all these providers when they were prevailed upon by the music companies to do something about this? Are they not actually doing anything that we just think they might be? Well, I believe that uh, the BPI is um, actively in discussions with the ISPs about uh, a common strategy going forwards. But the, um, the trial campaign that was run in particular by Virgin Media in uh, the early summer of this year when they sent out um, a few hundred um, educational e um, letters, as they described them. I.e. Uh, don't do it. Um, notifying people that um, it was a poor thing to do and um, um, there were consequences. And uh, obviously that received quite, <laughs> quite a lot of uh, press coverage. And as a result, um, it's become generally understood um, that that, um, that campaign of monitoring is continuing. Is this all kind of money driven though? Because isn't there um, a trend now for legal downloads to become cheaper or free, you know, I indeed? So does that kind of take the heat out of this? Well, there are a number of, number of um, trends that are um, happening simultaneously. Uh, first of all, uh, for the first time, we've recorded um, that the population of legal downloaders is now in the majority. Um, so you correctly pointed out that um, illegal downloading. Um, as an incidence is down from 43% uh, to 39 but now we've got 51% uh, of, uh, of the online population um, legally downloading. Um, and that's, that's, that's partly driven by availability. Um, the number one reason stated, by, particularly by the older age groups, as to why they um, download unauthorized content is simply because it's not available legally. Um, that's obviously bogus to an extent, but it, it is a factor. Um, so the massive increase in uh, available availability of uh, legal content to either purchase or um, stream, download, or even webcast for free um, is a factor. And um, one in two of uh, illegal downloaders say that um, they are actually doing so less because of the availability of uh, free legal music. Thanks very much indeed for joining us this morning. That's Russell Hart from Entertainment Media Research.